Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Gungans and droids, and more importantly today, all of you, Kiati, Moondi, looking coneheads, we are going to be going over how you can beat the Kiati Moondi mission. Everything you need to know if you're going into a specific situation, how can you work around the cards you've been dealt? We're going to talk about modding. Modding is incredibly important for this mission. But before we do all that, I want to give you guys a little bit of comfort this in my opinion the kiati Mundi mission is the most difficult event in the game at this point i want to give you a little bit of comfort if you don't complete this mission it is an incredibly hard event and sometimes you're going to be given a bad set of cards as i'm going to give you with an amazing graphic today depending on what scenario you're going to be walking into that reek battle and secondly don't be too concerned about getting Kiati Mundi right away. Wat Timbor, an amazing character. You need to have Wat Timbor. Kiati Mundi, I've shown some gameplay in the past, right when he got unlocked a couple months ago by somebody, and he's not an amazing character. And without Galactic Republic Jedi reworks, him being at seven stars to be maybe used as some leftover Galactic Republic Jedi in Republic Offensive Territory Battles, don't fret if you're not going to get Kiati Mundi anytime soon but with that in mind you're going to want to get him shards because i'm assuming one day kiati mundi is going to be a character that will eventually get better with hopefully a mace window rework and all those galactic republic jedi it's time ladies and gentlemen you only get one shot at this do not miss your chance to blow other clones not helpful right now maybe at some point the rng factor will be mitigated if these other clones potentially get reworks one day as of now do not use commander cody do not use clone sergeant this is the team to run now i am not moving on beyond until i show you this little guide right here I've, i haven't seen this guy before i've beaten the mission many times literally as i'm recording the video this is being shared around i'm gonna leave a link down below to this image share it with your guild there's a discord link as well to these group of people who made an extremely helpful guide by wookies always when i'm guessing that's their guild name but apparently the the strategy originally came from 50 shards of camp there's i'm gonna leave the link to this guide right here and there's a discord server so if you need help feel free to go in this discord server and th they're gonna help you out but overall this is all the information you need to know i wish i had something like this for the first several months someone made it it's gonna make life beautiful the overall strategy that we're gonna see is you need to kill b2s first that's mandated. You cannot do anything else until the B2s are gone. Then, the next character you're going to want to eventually work on is getting Jango out. And then lastly, the Reek. As we see, the basic strategy is listed right here. Give command to Rex, and then you're going to cleanse Trampled on Shock T. And if Jango has damage immunity, you're going to use Echo Fives and Arcs to attack the Reek. And then Rex and Shock attack Jango. Do not attack the Reek, because if you attack the Reek, you're feeding Terminator. So take precious advantage of the big characters putting out big damage don't let rex and shock T hit the reek because they're not going to do much if Django's not immune attack Django, and you need to kill him with rex's aerial advantage that's why i mentioned earlier make sure rex is always going to have more stacks at trample than Django, so you can land the aerial advantage on them it sounds simple the basic strategy is quite simple but when you enter battle depending how the first few moves open up you are going to need to work with the cards you are dealt with and as we see there are three major cards that are going to be dealt with will Django burn at the start will Django use the rocket at the start will Django use the basic at the start depending on what happens after these move sets you are then going to want to follow the guy that shock and fives dies worst case scenario it's happened to me plenty of times you basically aren't, aren't going to win the match unfortunately it does happen if shakti dies you're in trouble if fives dies first you're in trouble you only want fives dying if someone else is sacrificing him these are basically all the outcomes i could even think of this guy is so beautifully well done big shout again to wookies always win and 50 shards of camp we're going to enter the battle right now ladies and gentlemen and basically kind of show you how this guide works and of course all the key mechanics we already kind of brought them up and bonus step if you have a whale of cory be sure the kiss it before we go in <laughs> all right ladies and gentlemen let's go ahead and knock out this mission so we're going to enter the battle and we're going to see what cards were dealt with that's the one thing out of our control the modding's in your control the basic strategies in your control but now we need to see what the situation is going to be i'll go ahead and show you the text real quick hostiles ahead careful the reek and the bounty hunter whether you're a beast or otherwise you're all targets to me so i'm going to go ahead and bring the camera down because we need to follow each step very closely so here we go ba entering the battle right now Oh my gosh, that was the best thing possible. Starting off with the basic, that can actually go very well for us. So, now let's go back and follow the guide. So as you see, the guide says if Django does basic at start, you're going to want to target the B2s, cleanse shock with trampled, use Rex's form up, fives cover fire and keep in mind luckily if fives if he taunts the reek and the uh, Django can go around it so it's not that big of a deal. We're going to call shock, no trample to assist and then echo AoE and then hopefully Django's going to be gone. So let's go ahead and try this out. So unfortunately, we're not getting Shock T to go first, but we're still going to target the B1s right here. Let's at least 
cleanse off the buff immunities. We're going to go ahead and give the, the command over to Sexy Rexy right here. Skrata, boom. All right, we got to get those B2s out as fast as possible. And hopefully in a moment, now we're going to use Stand Your Ground. We're going to cleanse Shock T of the Trampled. Stand Your Ground. The spell all stacks and trample from target ally. The character in the leader slot gains the ability at the start of the encounter. So we're going to get the, to Shock T. And there we go. Start doing some work over on the B, uh, B2s. We're going to go ahead. Throw up an AoE. See what we can do here. We got to get rid of those stacks and trample as fast as possible. We're going to use this healing ability and clean up our arc. We need to make sure arc survives as long as possible. He's not going to assist again because he has trampled, but we're going to get Shock T to come in here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to call Shock T for the assist, and we should get one B2 out of here. So that's one B2 gone. Fantastic. All right. So let's keep rolling with what we got. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remember, I don't want to stand your ground on Rex because I wanted to keep all the stacks of trampled. I'm going to give this to fives because one thing is you don't want fives having too many stacks of trample because I believe there's a bug in the game. Even the article that I showed you shows it. If fives has too many stacks of trample, he will pass over negative effects through sacrifice. It's a bug. Should be fixed. Keep going after these B2s right here. There we go. Boom, boom, boom. Hopefully you might get a sacrifice here in a moment. We should get the turret to assist. One more to go. All right. We're looking pretty good so far. So now, remember the rules. If Django has damage immunity, attack the Reek with Arc, Fives, and Echo. So we have Fives. We're going to start attacking over here. Looking all right so far. Okay, okay, okay. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to hide my Arc Trooper under stealth. He is going to put out so much damage, and so many times I have won because he's the last man standing. We're going to keep him here. All right. We lost damage immunity. Attack Django no matter what. Whoever it is, attack him. I don't care. Django has damage immunity. Arc Trooper is going to attack the Reek now. Keep command over on Rex. Big hit right here. 19,000. All right. We're going to use our AoE on Echo. Hit Django and the Reek. We should get some, hopefully, some decent damage out there. All right. Looking good. So now that the B2s are gone, I'm not going to worry too much about fives and his stacks at Trampled. What I'm going to do here is give it to Echo. So hopefully moving forward, we'll be able to get some bonus attacks out of him because we want him to be able to assist. All right. Looking good. So what we're going to do now is we're going to call Shakti for the assist so she can give offense up to our team we're gonna get a taunt not the big of a problem Django can go around us if he wants to aerial advantage incredibly important we're gonna be able to take out Django in a moment here but we're not going to attack the reek because we don't want to feed him turn meter so we're gonna go attack that dude and luckily now we're getting echo to assist when there's b2s I like to make sure we cleanse up the stacks that trampled on fives after shock T of course and then once the b2s are gone I'm trying to get rid of the stacks that trampled on echoes here we go we're going after the reek look oh that all big misplay right there Make sure you don't do what I do. We should have attacked the Reek right there. So we're going to roll with the punches here. All right. We haven't gotten a sacrifice just yet. What I'm going to try to do is now we're going to heal us up. And I'm going to give this over to Rex. We're going to give it to Rex. He's not going to assist. right. No one's going to assist right now. But we're going to heal him up a little bit. All right. Aerial advantage coming in. Let's go ahead. Get rid of Django number one. And now we just got to work on him again. All right. Django lost his damage unit. We need to go all in on him. Here we go. Boom, boom. All right. Come on. Keep passing this over to him. Okay. And almost there. All right, Shakti's gone. It's okay. Shakti's gone. AoE time. We got to get rid of Django before he does anything too funny. We're going to use uh, basic over on Django. Let's see if we can get rid of him. Not quite. He's still going after the Reek. Almost there, guys. Okay. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to just make sure we put him in, in the coffin. Get rid of him. All right. Now, it's four against the Reek. So far, so good, ladies and gentlemen. I do have to say this is some of the better luck we've had. Sacrifice. So, if I to sacrifice his stats, we should be putting out some good damage between Arc and Echoes. Here we go. There we go. Let's, uh, this isn't going to matter too much, but we'll just put it up anyways. Okay. Come on. Stick with this, boys and gals. Keep this over on Rex because he's fast. You want to take in as many turns as possible. In the yellow. Throw up the AoE. 63,000 damage. He's almost in the red. We're, look, we're standing strong so far. Standing strong, ladies and gentlemen. Aerial advantage will not do much to the rig. I think we got this in the bag. I'll go ahead and show you how this works. It's not going to defeat him instantly. I know there was going to be a million comments if I didn't say so otherwise. And ladies and gentlemen, let him do one more round of trampled. Put him in the grave. We got Caddy Mundi Shark. Now, you will notice you kind of have to work a little bit beyond the guide. The guide that I showed you isn't going to spell out every little thing because those are the main cards you're going to be dealt at the very beginning. But sometimes things are going to be different in between and you just got to understand those rules it's mainly the thing you got to worry about is when who you're going to use stand your ground shock t you definitely want to have her you stand her ground on yourself and then when there's b2s you stand your ground on fives so we can get as many attacks as possible on the b2s turn them away then after the b2s are gone make sure you start cleansing stand your ground off of uh, echo or shock t and then the rest seems to work out and before we actually talk about specifics of modding we need to talk about a very important debuff that the Kiati Mundi mission relies on 
trampled. Now, I highly recommend you click on details yourself and read through it before you go in. You need to do some reading. You're going to need to do remodding. Remodding is a must. You can't go in with the mods you have on your, your characters already. But as you scroll down, you'll eventually come across to the details of the reek. Read all these abilities very carefully, but the thing I need to highlight before I talk about mods, because you won't understand why we're modding a certain way, is trampled. Trampled is going to be the main diva that's going to ruin your day, but it's also got some important things to help you win. Trampled, you're going to lose minus 50% protection and minus 10% defense for each stack of trampled. So the main point I'm bringing this up, do not mod for protection or defense. It will be thrown away. You need to mod for health, speed, offense, critical chance, critical damage. I'll go over more specifics, which characters need what. Unfortunately, Trample does nothing to Django Fett, really. These abilities are also going to be important. Make sure you read through these. But the other thing that's going to be important to Trampled is when you read Bounty Hunter's End, you're going to need to defeat Django before you take on the Reek. And the only way to do that is to ensure your characters, certain key characters, will have more stacks of Trampled than Django. If you have three and he has one, he will drop off his damage immunity and allow you to hit him. So the main things to look for a shock T is you're going to want to use a speed set and you're going to want to use health sets. And again, just to reemphasize, don't use mods that have protection primaries. Like you're going to notice I have some protection, the secondaries. Ideally, you don't want that. This has some nice health though, but you're going to want to try to mod shock T for health primaries as many places as possible. Health primaries, good speed. She needs to be fast. Put your fastest mod set on this character, Captain Rex, he will also be fast, but luckily through his unique ability, he's going to be taken care of with his unique ability and some good speed mods out as well. Try to get her health as high as possible. Get her speed as high as possible. That's really the main thing to look for Shakti. She's not going to be your damage dealer. She's there for support, healing up your team, using stand your ground, hiding people under stealth. That's the main role of Shakti. So you don't need to worry about damage output here. Captain Rex, pretty similar deal to Shakti. You're going to use a speed set, health set. Try to stay away from protection primaries as much as possible and you're gonna want to also make sure he's got some pretty good speed over 300 is ideal over 315 is what you really really want 307 i'm kind of slicing it in the middle health you're gonna want to give him a lot of health as possible 80,000 is definitely way up there you can definitely go a little bit lower than the health but really as give him as much health and speed as possible and you're gonna be okay and kind of like shock t rex is not gonna be responsible for damage he shouldn't be hitting the reek that much his main job is making sure he takes out Django Fett. As we know with Arc Trooper, don't worry about speed. Arc Trooper, you're going to rely on health as well as offense sets and just jack up his offense as much as possible. We're using offense primaries right here, more offense right there, more offense right there, and again, no protection. We're using health, good speed in there, and of course, we're completing the offense set right there. Speed, you definitely want to make sure you don't neglect too much speed. Of course, not running a speed set, but really, you want to try to get above 250 at the minimum, but the closer you get to 270 plus, the better you're going to be off. And the offense is the most important part. If you follow my mod sets and the primaries, you should be around here. Here. 10 to 11,000 plus is the range you're going to want to be sitting in. Echo is next, and likewise, he is going to be responsible for a lot of damage. And here, we're altering our modding set a little bit. We're doing critical damage and a critical chance set. And again, similar to Arc Trooper, lots and lots of offense. And you don't need to worry too much about this character being fast because he's mainly going to be hopefully assisting and he's going to be one of our main damage dealers on the team nonetheless great aoe and a great basic attack again health as high as possible don't use any protection sets in here i actually wish i can get a little bit more health on him kind of like arc trooper we're gonna have to run at this i feel like i'm a little bit below where i want to be you definitely want to get that 60 80 000 range ideally 70 000 plus is the way to be at. and your special offense and needs to look like arc troopers you're gonna look at somewhere between 10 and 11 000 plus and i feel like we're in a pretty good spot with him last and certainly not least if shock to your fives dies at the beginning you're in trouble fives is crucial you don't want him dying until you let him die which is you want him to sacrifice worst case scenario fives we're going all out health ideally we're going to want the sacrifice and that tactical awareness on fives you're gonna eventually going to want him dying off and then feeding his health because protection is going to be garbage and trampled and offense so as you're seeing we're running a lot of health and a lot of offense on this character 90,000 plus is good if you can get even higher wow amazing but definitely you need to get above 80,000 health and his offense 6,000 plus seems to be kind of the target to shoot at that's the range that I've been all right I've I've done bet I've done fine under 6,000 but 6,000 plus is great because you're gonna want to feed all this offense to your echo and your arc trooper so that's basically it right there ladies and gentlemen you're going to be given most likely a different hand you might get a similar hand i was dealt you just follow that guy if you're looking for the rough overview depending on what Django does at the start 
follow that guide work with the cards you're dealt with there is a strategy depending on what Django opens up with kill b2s kill Django kill reek check your mods before going into battle rip all the mods off possible I know it's annoying mod management is horrible in this game but you need to make sure you get your mods in line before you enter battle and if you lose don't fret too much Catimundi is not that amazing of a character right now and it's gonna take a quite a few more months before we finally maybe see something that works with our boy Ki-Adi Mooney thank you guys so much for watching like if you did enjoy the video comment down below on all your thoughts and be sure to subscribe so you're not missing a thing and i'll see all you lovely people in the next video larry gary hit him with the outro Bang!